Hello everybody and welcome to lesson 21.1 in the Python tutorial series. Today we're going to be addressing the topic of slicing and indexing strings. When I first started learning programming, indexing, uh, slicing and indexing in particular, but the indexing part of it was something that I learned but it was sort of hard for me to grasp. And I fumbled my way through it thinking, gosh, I'm never going to use this. this. This seems like it's out in left field and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of applications for what I want to do. And indexing quietly became one of the most important and useful skills that I developed as a programmer, particularly when I was first learning. It's going to have a lot more uses and a lot more value once we introduce uh, lists and list type variables in future lessons. But it's something that you want to start getting used to now. Indexing in Python is a very important skill. Today we'll be looking at it through the manipulation of strings, and as we move forward and start getting into classes and lists, index notation becomes just something that happens in every single program. It becomes important in managing inventories and keeping track of what users have and, and, and things like that. So let's go ahead and fire up the Python interpreter, and let's get started with lesson 21.1. Slicing and indexing strings. So here we are back at the uh, Python shell. And to start our example on slicing and indexing, we're going to need a variable. So I'm going to head over here to the Python shell. And I'm going to set a variable x equal to a string program in Python. This is no different than any other string we've done in any other lesson. I can call it by simply typing in the variable. I can print that variable. This is just a normal string. But something most programmers, at least beginning programmers, aren't aware of is within that string, every single character has its own unique address. And that's what's called an index location. In Python, we always start counting from zero. Just about every time you do a counting type exercise in Python, the first number that uh, is counted is zero. And I'll throw a graphic up here on the screen to show you what I'm talking about. But if you look at this right here, the first character is said to be at index location 0. The second character is said to be at index location 1. And it goes on from there, 2, 3, 4. Uh, spaces do count, so they get an index location as well. So each individual character has its own address. And using brackets in Python, we can access individual elements of a string. For example, if I wanted just the first letter, which is the capital P, I can type X and using brackets, put the number zero in brackets, and that says what I'm looking for is the variable X, but I'm only looking for index location zero. And I can see it's returning a P. If I said I want X at index location one, I get an R. If I said x at index location 2, I get an o, and so on. So I can access the individual characters within the string by putting brackets around them after the variable name and return just a string version of that specific character. There's also negative index values. If the first letter of your string is at index location 0, then the last letter of the string is always at index location negative 1. It counts backwards from negative 1 until you get to the beginning of your string. So you could really say that every single string in Python has two index locations, a positive index location and a negative index location. So over here I could say I want x at index location negative 1 and I'm getting the n, which is this n here in program in Python. Similarly, if I set x at index location negative 17, I'm getting a capital P, which is the exact same character that x at index location 0 returned. Really simply, that's what index locations are. What we'll be looking at next is slicing. Slicing is right up there with index locations, and that's taking not just individual characters, but taking just parts of the string, maybe two characters, maybe five characters, maybe seven characters. But 
To start off, just make sure you have a good grasp on how index locations work inside a string. Slicing is very similar to indexing. If you understand indexing, which is a, a simple concept to begin with, indexing shouldn't be that big of a problem. An index is an individual position within a string or later a list variable. A slice is going to be a substring of an original string from a start index to an end index. A substring is just a smaller part of the original string that's being returned. We're going to write this by typing in the variable that we want, selecting the first index location that we want printed, putting in a colon, and then going to the last index location that we want. And it's important to notice that the last index location is not included in the substring that we return. So let's say we just wanted the word in. I would say x, and I'd look at my index locations and see that in starts at index location 8. It ends at index location 9, so I'm going to go from 8 to 10, since 10 is not inclusive. That's going to return just the string in. Now, I might want just the word gram out of program. I can do that by typing x from index location 3, which is where the g in program is, and sending this to index location 7, which is the first space. That's going to return just the word gram. I can also slice using the negative index locations, and I could get gram also by having x from index location negative 14 through negative 10. But I also get the word gram. At its very basic level, that's how slicing works. Sometimes you may want to start slicing from the very beginning of a string. And it will work to type in, say, x, and let's go from index location 0 through index location 7, which is the location of the first space, to get the word program. There's also a shortcut that you can use in Python, and that is if Python encounters a colon with nothing in front of it, it's going to assume that you want to go from the beginning of the string. So x from index location 0 to 7 is the same as saying x to index location 7. You don't necessarily need the 0. The same can be said about the end of the string as well. If I wanted just the word Python, I could say uh, from index location 11 to index location 17 and get the word Python, or I could tell Python that I want x from index location 11 to the end of the string by leaving the spot after the colon blank, and I'll get the exact same result. I can also use this to concatenate strings together. If I wanted to create the word programming, I could say x from index location 0 to index location 7, which is going to return program, and then I'm going to add ming to the end, and I can get the word programming. If I were to take x from index location 0 through 7, add ming, and then add, um, let's see, we're going to start from index location 7, so x starting at 7 through the end of the string, I can change program in Python to programming in Python. These index locations do not support item assignment. What that means is I can't change my string. If I wanted to change uh, the p, the, if I wanted to change the p in Python to say an x, well, I know the p in Python is at index location 11, so I couldn't say x at index location 11 equals x. I'm going to get an error that says string object does not support item assignment. So it's impossible for me to change the original string through indexing, but it is possible for me to access individual parts of that string. So if you ever see an error that says that um, string object does not support item assignment, you're not able to change what your string is equal to. You'll also run into problem if your index location is out of range. If I want x at index location 18, there is no index location 18, and I'm going to get string index out of range. Now that is a very common indexing error. 
in particular, when you start working with things like inventories and backpacks and um, you're keeping track of maybe what a player is car carrying, if they only have one item in their backpack, they've got an item at index location zero. And your program will have to scale to adjust for multiple uh, items, say, in a backpack. Here, you will see this if you start counting from one. That's the big common mistake most programmers make, is if I want to access the last letter in program in Python, I know that's at index location 17 because I started counting at zero. But in my head, if I forget that and I start counting from one, I'll end up with exit index location 18, and that will be out of range, and it will cause my program to crash. And that's pretty much going to do it for the introduction to indexing and slicing. This is definitely not the last time you're going to see it. And when we get into list variables, when we get into for loops, uh, index locations will play a critical role in understanding those. So make sure that you understand just what we covered here. There's not a lot to it, but it's a good starting place because it's a concept that comes up over and over and over again. And like I said earlier, when I first started programming, I didn't think it was going to be that important a concept, and it really does become crippling if you don't quite understand it. To make sure that you do understand it, let's go ahead and take a look at the Lesson 21.1 Challenge Program. So your Lesson 21.1 Challenge Program is one that I actually find to be a, a lot of fun and one that we'll expand on as we continue moving forward. And that's a Pig Latin Converter. If you've never heard of Pig Latin before, it, it's not really a language, but it's, it has some very simple words, and you've probably even heard it before. Uh, Pig Latin words are, you, are created by removing the first letter from a word, adding it to the end of the word, and then adding a Y to the end. So my name, Steve, becomes Tivse. Um, if a word begins with a consonant, that's how you create the Pig Latin equivalent. Take off the consonant from the beginning, move it to the end, and add a Y. If a word begins with a vowel, you simply add a Y to the end. So if I said Steve is programming in Python, it would be Tivse is a programming pay in a Python pay. And so this Pig Latin converter will help me quickly convert words that I don't know. So like I said, Steve converted to Pig Latin becomes Tivse. There's the uh, T-E-V-E, -E, there's the first letter of my name, and then a Y to the end. And I don't have this set up in any sort of uh, loop, so I'll keep running the program. And let's say I was going to convert the word mouse. Mouse becomes Ausme. And slicing becomes lysing say. So any word that begins with a consonant simply has that consonant move to the end of the word and then add a y. Words that begin with a vowel simply have a y added to the end. So if I said index, it becomes index a. Now if I said in, it becomes in a. In order to write the Pig Latin Converter, you have to do the basics of string slicing and string indexing. There's not a whole lot of other exciting challenge programs that you can really do at this point. We'll get to some more in-depth and probably fun uh, programs using indexing. But for where we're at right now, this is a really good slicing and indexing challenge program that will utilize what we talked about in this lesson. So go ahead and see if you can write a pig latin converting program that is intelligent enough to understand whether or not a word starts with a vowel or not and then properly convert it to its pig latin equivalent you don't have to put it in any sort of fancy loop you don't have to put a menu system on it all that stuff is stuff that you can do optionally but uh, if you can get words to convert you're in a good place as always, if you have any problems, please leave those in the comments, and I will certainly help you out. Um, you can leave, you can copy and paste the code that you're working with that has problems into the comments, and I can help you debug it. So anything we can do to help you along and get you through your challenges, I will be happy to do. 
As always, thank you so much for watching the Python tutorial series, and have a great day.